there's nothing I would want more for a person than for them to know who they are and in mm-hmm. entirety to feel confident and comfortable in, in their identity. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think therapy is like the best gift you could possibly give yourself. Mm-hmm. If you're at all curious about how to better your life or get out of a slump or just turn a page or start a new chapter, like fucking go to therapy <laughs> and yeah. see how that goes for you. You're listening to The Real You. Thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary in all of us. My name is Dooley, and this podcast is in partnership with Pocket Change, the social platform built to show the real you. How have you found therapy to interact with your, not just business life, but your personal life as well? Like, when did that start with that, and how has that kind of evolved? I started therapy, like, over five years ago. Um, My mother's a therapist, um, and my aunt is a therapist, so I've grown up very comfortable with the idea of being in therapy. Um, And I've always really encouraged my friends and family to partake in therapy because I think it's really important. I think um, I wouldn't be where I am today if I had not been in therapy, started it five years ago. I know that for sure. Um, (laughs) And I think, like... The cool thing about what therapy does and like why I always, the way I explain it to people, I'm like, think of it as like a package, right? You're opening a package and there's layers of tissue paper. Mm -hmm. Every layer you pull back is going to teach you something new about yourself Mm -hmm. from a childhood habit that you didn't subconsciously realize you were doing. Maybe it's an attachment thing that your parents ingrained in you so early on and you just have to kind of unlearn some of those things. Mm -hmm. Um, Each layer you pull back though, like, yes, it takes work. It takes effort, personal emotional, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but ultimately you get to the gift at the end and it's like, you've kind of figured yourself out and like, there's nothing I would want more for a person than for them to know who they are and in mm-hmm. entirety to feel confident and comfortable in, in their identity. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think therapy is like the best gift you could possibly give yourself. Mm-hmm. If you're at all curious about how to better your life or get out of a slump or just turn a page or start a new chapter, like fucking go to therapy (laughs) and see how that goes for you. Because, you know, like Jackie, my like community director for Fireside, you know, we talk about it all the time. We have therapy every one, you know, Wednesdays we have like our (laughs) block. We're just offline and it's mental health health thing in our company. Um, that if you need to take a session during the day, like go take a session Mm -hmm. and make sure that's baked into your schedule because that's how we all become better versions of ourselves Mm -hmm. and work more more in harmony with one another. Um, and ultimately create a product that's going to do better impact for the world. If we can Mm -hmm. get our shit together and not have to work through that, you know, with our clients, right. If we can work all of our own personal, you know, trauma or journey on our own, that doesn't get projected into the work we do. And so I yeah, think yeah. that's really important for people mm. to recognize. And I think also, you know, from a friend standpoint too, everybody goes through different hardships in their life. And I think having a therapist or a counselor, somebody that you can vent to where it's not unloading a bunch of your trauma onto your friends who mm. might not be in the mental state to be able to handle that, or they don't have the skill sets to be mm. fully equipped to support you. I think that's another thing to really consider. So mm. can't, I can't speak highly enough about. Yeah. Story. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I mean, I started going in I guess two or three, two and a half years ago, maybe now. Um, but yeah, same thing where sometimes talking to people about it, it's like, oh, I don't have anything I need to figure out. There's nothing, you don't need to have something wrong with you or to like find an answer to something as much as it's to your point to learn about yourself is one of the best forms of self-love or to just grasp that, wait a second, we've got so much existence to be had. Yeah it's like going to the gym for your physical body in the same way that you don't just go to the gym and then come out and you're ripped right. or even you go to the gym and you start with upper body stuff and then you realize you've got core issues and then you go into cart. It's like ther- therapy is just a practice of the mind and like understanding yeah. your own relationship with your own mind and, and body. And then yeah. the point having a third party person so someone who's not, doesn't have predestined ideas to who's around you or can like, yeah, do you have the capacity to even just listen or pose the right questions? Um, yeah, you've got kind of this unbiased person that you get yeah. to sort of use as a as a wall for bouncing ideas off of. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I also think too, therapy can look really different for other for other people. I, mm-hmm. for me, I really I love talking, so it really helps to talk <laughs> things out. Um, I know a lot of people though that like love exercise as therapy, and like they get all of their kind of shit out by just like going on a 13 mile run. I can't imagine that for me personally. 
Um, some people find a lot of therapy in psychedelics. I think, mm -hmm. I think psychedelics are incredibly therapeutic. Um, and I think they're incredibly mind expansive and, and mm -hmm. they're great. So yeah, I don't know. I think there's a lot of different therapies out there for people. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, hundred percent agree on the, on the psychedelic question. Yes. Topic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what is your experience been in, I guess that possibly either being therapeutic for you or mind opening or scary? Like how has that maybe impacted your life? I think mind opening for sure. I don't think I've ever had like a super scary uh, experience with psychedelics. Thankfully, knock on wood, Jesus. I hope I don't, but um, I will say, I think psychedelics are for when you're older. Like I didn't start experimenting with them until I was at least 22 years old. So like <laughs> Most of my brain was relatively developed by that point. Mm -hmm. You know, I was stable. I had gone through three or four years of therapy already. So like I knew who I was, but I think people enter into psychedelics with a lot of unknown. And I think the biggest thing I tell people is like, you have to be really solid with yourself before you even think about mm -hmm. kind of taking something. I think that's like how you can find yourself on a pretty bad trip, mm -hmm. um, you know, or that's the purpose and you really need to heal and you need to go through that bad trip to come out on the other side and feel kind of better in your day-to-day -day life. So I think it can go both ways, but, um, I think psychedelics are incredibly mind expanding. I think they are really great ways to have new creative ideas come into your head. Um, and I think just for me from, like the perspective that I like doing it, I'm a, I'm a social person. So I like doing it with, the, with others, but I really like doing it, at, you know, at live music events or mm -hmm. in nature um, where there's sort of something that you're witnessing or experiencing as a collective, like that feels really cool. Um, I love going to the dead and company shows every summer. Like that's my favorite tradition. Um, yeah. And we get a big group of friends and we all go together mm -hmm. and that to me, psychedelics feel like the closest thing to time travel that we have nowadays. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I think of like my, my dad and my mom used to go to dead shows when Jerry was still alive and, mm -hmm. you know, like they were living it. And I think like, if you take some kind of psychedelic and you go to a show nowadays, you know, you feel like you're back in like the seventies and eighties when they were at their peak and mm -hmm pretty cool. I think that's like a really interesting way of experiencing history um, and time in a really non-linear way. So mm. yeah, that's sort of a random tidbit, but yeah, yeah. You know, a fan, I definitely think people should experiment with them when they're old enough and ready. And I think do it in a safe way and make sure you have a good community of people to help you go through that experience for your first time. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say the, we're kind of tapping to into also with the nature and the music stuff. Um, I think it's a like immense presence that sometimes psychedelics can, can give you, which also can, I think, be the scary side of stuff. It's sometimes living in a world where you're constantly in the middle of doing something or thinking yeah. about what's next or all that. And um, psychedelics can be one way to kind of almost slow that down and just bring you into your own, okay. own world. And then when that happens, that can be a very beautiful and then mind-opening and all that stuff. But then there is the side of it, which is, maybe it is the need of healing of coming in to recognize certain patterns you've been involved in that you're not the most proud of, or something you might be trying to figure out that um, it's hard to sit with those thoughts or things you may have had regrets about or stuff like that. Um, but to your point, I ultimately think that even those bad or kind of scary trips or moments, um, as long as in the moment you're being safe with everything uh, as long as can, actually, <laughs> can actually be uh, yeah, a very healthy way to kind of yeah, look at your own life from a, it almost feels like an outside perspective, even though it's just you. Um, totally. But. I love what you just said about being present. I think that's like the hardest thing about personally for me, I don't really ever stop and slow down and process what I've done. Mm -hmm. And that's really bad. I should do that. You know, I should be able to like pause and be like, look what you've built in two years or less. Like, look at that. Mm -hmm. I don't do that because I think it freaks me out. And then I like don't <laughs> feel like I have to go to the next thing. I always want to stay like focused and hungry to get to that next level. Mm -hmm. um, psychedelics help me get really present though. Like whenever I've taken them in the last two years, it has been like one of those aha moments of like, oh shit, your life has pretty drastically changed. And like, that's okay. And like acknowledge what you've done and what you've built. Um, 
and be proud of that. And so it's given me actually a place to reflect Mm -hmm. in total, like in a present, like non-interrupted way. And it's cool. It really makes me feel happy about what I've done. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Have you ever had some sort of experience by yourself with psychedelics? Um, like completely solo. Yeah. I don't think I've ever done them completely solo. No, I've done them like in small groups though, where it feels like I could go take a moment away and like be mm-hmm. alone for a little bit, but I've always wanted to do a solo mission. So I love it. Yeah. No, it, is you an it, is. <laughs> it is a mission. <laughs> it's definitely a mission. I, I would probably, if I, if I did it solo, I'd probably have Connor still doing it with me on the side, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll hang in this probably, group over there. <laughs> Yeah, no, but I, I think it's great. It really makes you present. It makes you reflect. Um, yeah, it's really been eye opening. It's helped me actually slow down and appreciate this and celebrate it. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and I, I, yeah. So that's all. On on that kind of like with the appreciating everything, whether it be in again business or life stuff. Like over this yeah. year, now with things kind of opening up post COVID and all that, I guess what's something you're most appreciative or proud of with fireside and then, or I guess even just your general self existence. Mm -hmm. And then what's something you're most scared of like fear or anxiety wise? Like what are those kind of polar points right now for you? Um, my most proud, I would say is being able to have Connor full time at this point with fireside Mm -hmm. is like a huge accomplishment. (laughs) Um, when we started the company together, like the understanding was he was going to hold his steady agency job for as long as it took to get us to a point where we financially could afford both of us. Um, and I kind of took that bigger risk of, all right, I'm going to have to make my own money somehow. And, um, I think being able to get us to a point less than two years later, where we've got both myself and him salaried full-time Jackie salaried full-time, Haley as an incredible like part-time content specialist for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and our team is growing, like they're doing interviews in the other room right now as I'm on yeah. this call. So um, I think the growth in the time span that we've been around is like kind of insane to me. I, mm-hmm. I think I'm really proud of like the ethos and intention we put forward. Cause I don't think like when people ask what we are, I always say it as a simple way of like, we're a community driven marketing, um, and events collective, basically Mm -hmm. that's the easiest way to describe what we do. But when you break it down, it's like, yeah, we sort of act as like almost like a B Corp model for the Mm -hmm. community. Like how can we help storytell, um, musicians and artists stories and get them paid through bigger budgets that they don't have access to, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that's been a big one. I'd also say the philanthropy side has been huge. Mm -hmm. Uh, We raised $35,000 for Sophie's Neighborhood at one dinner over the summer. And like, that was just a massive accomplishment. Um, I was with Chef Taj and his wife, Danielle, for Miss Betty's Cooking. Um, But then also like Connor and I talk about this all the time. And like, especially with you and how you're partnering with Hooch Boots right now. And I've seen a ton of other partnerships happen. Like the impact that Fireside makes on friends, creatives, brands, companies, nonprofits, where they're doing work on projects without us after the fact, that is the best feeling. That means yeah. we do it because it's, it's like, again, we like to be seen as sort of this super connector that can just bring all these parties and people together to make m- missions happen and goals work. Um, and so like when I, you know, see that Boulder Spirits is working on an event with Taj that we weren't even involved with to start or, you know, Pocket Change and Hooch Booch are doing initiatives together, mm-hmm. you know, Ski House and Hooch Booch. Like, it's so cool to see kind of the everlasting effect of our impact on these companies. Yeah. It's not just like we've worked with you on one project. It's like we introduced you to five or six other people that you can continue to work with outside of this project when it ends. So like mm-hmm. that feels like I have chills just talking about it. <laughs> such a cool thing. Like that's yeah. amazing. Um, that's like genuine community right there. It's like, yeah, oh, we're a community, but like you're actually building. We're building people's relationships. Or, yeah. yeah, like yeah they'll yeah. come to us and be like, we need a beverage partner. And I'm like, I let me introduce you to five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. like, great. Now this person can work with all of these different relationships and like that small business is supported and this beverage partner is supported and yeah, yeah, yeah. like a win-win for everyone. So that I'd say those are all the, the benefits and the pros. I'd say the biggest fear I have is probably what any small business owner's fear is, which is just like 
cash running out or like <laughs> funds or clients <laughs> not wanting to work with us or like we have to let people go. Like that keeps me up at night for sure. Um, knock on wood, thankfully we have not had to experience any of that yet. But like, you know, I always say if we have to get to that point, we will find a solution and we will turn that ship around and make sure that we don't have to close our doors. You know, it's like you just pivot and you make some new moves. So yeah, that's my biggest fear. I, I think the quality of work we produ- produce is is great. I think the style in which we do it and the way that we work with people, not just as clients, but as like friends, like genuine friends we want to spend our time with. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the coolest part of my job is I work with my friends. Like when I go take a business meeting or go for lunch, it's typically with someone I would be hanging out with on the weekend as well. Like you, yeah. like Lily, yeah. like does, like, you know, all these people, Anna. So um, yeah, that's the coolest thing is I get to work with my friends and ultimately all of my fear and anxiety is mm-hmm. just my inner brain telling me you can't do it. You can't do it. So yeah, I just yeah, try yeah. and tell them to stop talking and we're good. Yeah. All, yeah. With, with that too. So I, first off, I totally agree and kind of see the community stuff even just happening more, you know, coming, being, whether being Rhino or just uh, in Denver, like I've been pretty involved with the music scene stuff too. And, um, I have to figure out some collaboration with you in, in the bass music world, but uh, yeah. so, but I, I can know. also just start to see um, see it around Denver with people, events. Like I will hit up some places still, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we're actually booked through on doing these kind of things." But let's set up in two months, and I'm like, yeah. "Wow, yeah, people are out here just moving, working." I know you guys are a big part of that too, so I think it's awesome to see. Um, yeah, I guess kind of even more of a, a wrapping up kind of question here. Um, what like goals moving forward like where do you sort of see the evolution of what you're doing is it yeah i just leave it at that goals moving forward and how do you see this evolving and what would make you proud in, in a few years here? um i think one of the biggest goals we're setting for ourselves is just to continue growing outside of denver so we have two clients that we have in nashville which is like a really great step in the right direction um but yeah, we're really looking for those tier two cities um, that are kind of within that 500,000 person range to like 800, 900,000 people in the city from a demographic standpoint, um, similar to Denver, where we can kind of come in and build sort of these chapters of Fireside around the country. Um, I don't totally know what that looks like yet. I know that there are some cities as a team that we've talked about wanting to get into. I think Austin makes a lot of sense for us as the next market. Um, I'd love to do some work out in Seattle. I think that would be a really fun place to find some connections and partnerships. Um, San Francisco, DC. I mean, obviously Chicago, I'm biased. I know that's not yeah. a tier two. <laughs> um, yeah, I really think ultimately it's expanding our company outside of just Colorado and continuing to grow and sort of building out teams that want to go with us. And I think we see Fireside not only from like a community standpoint, but also as a lifestyle brand. We have had a lot of meetings internally about how we want to use our platform because we've grown grown such kind of a big fan base here. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, it's pivoting our social media channel to not just be promoting the events that we're involved with, but also giving marketing tips to other small business owners and creatives. Mm-hmm. Um spotlighting small businesses in Denver that we love to go to through like our, um, Oh, the places we go. That's mm-hmm. a new content uh, bucket that we're going to be doing a lot with and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, making sure that we use our platform, not just to like spotlight what we do, but like what the other things that we're interested in are, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, cool, badass community members that are just going above and beyond. Like I want to make sure we're doing a static post about that person and interviewing yeah. them and sitting down with them. Um, I think like Fireside at Five started as such a conversational platform, sort of like this, you know, and I'd love to get back to those, not necessarily in the long form of doing an hour long chat, but a Fireside 15, yeah. 15 minutes of Q&A, kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's really using our platform to help spotlight the community at large mm-hmm. and then grow into new markets and help uplift new community members across the country there. So oh, yeah. I'd say that's probably what you can expect to see you um, from Fireside within the next, you know, two years, if we're, mm. if we're thinking big. Awesome. Awesome. And then actually coming into a very final question here, okay. I've been thinking about this too, is more of a theme, but um, like you as Gertie, so not Fireside, not as, um, yeah. what is, what is meaningful to you? Oh, what is meaningful to me mm-hmm. in life, in sure. <laughs> this is the first time I'm asking this question, so I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, what's meaningful to me? Experience. Experience mm. is so meaningful to me. I would pay 
you know, $1,200 mm-hmm. to go to a show with all of my best friends. If it means I'm going to have one of the best nights of my life. And mm-hmm. I find that like, whenever I'm like, I need to buy myself new clothes or like, I need to upgrade my, like my wardrobe, whatever it is. Mm. I can't get myself to spend money on that. It's like, I spend money and time and energy on creating experiences that for me yeah. are like memory collecting. Like yeah. I, it's a jar in my head of all of my favorite <laughs> memories, you know, like we just got back from Tulum. We were on a, an amazing trip with like our entire crew and we went out and had a really big day on the beach and it was just like this complete feeling of impulsivity. Let's get a table here. Let's go to this club there. Let's go to eat here. And it was like, I didn't care how much money I spent. And I know that's coming from a position of privilege. And I've also worked really hard to be able to afford that lifestyle for myself. Um, I would say meaning is experiences with the people I love. That Mm -hmm. is what makes my life rich and full and great. And that's that's what I love to do for others too. Like Fireside is, is how do we make sure that other people have you know, experiences that are worth collecting um, so that they remember that down the road. And I, I think that, that's all that marketing is. That's what it is. It's awesome. an open up feeling that's going to, ex, you know, ex, extend a brand presence mm-hmm. to you in such a deep way because you felt it and you experienced it. That is experiential marketing. That's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I think experience with friends and people I love, that's meaning for me. Oh, is that yeah. good? Is that a good answer? That's awesome. That's a good. All, all answers are good. It's about okay. what people do. So. <laughs> but no, that's perfect. Good. Sweet. Well, um, What's your answer to that? Oh, me. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm flipping this, man. Uh, it's meaningful to me. Well, it's kind of in that realm. I, I actually, um, I think like discovering, so in the kind of experience boat, but discovering love is meaningful to me so not just relationship with someone you're in love with but um love for yourself um and that means like finding that comes back to our self-awareness kind of conversation what is it that we actually like who really are we and what gives us energy and inspires us and brings us joy it's like that discovery of self-love and then there's the love for other people so in your kind of terms having experiences just having things happen, trying new stuff, going to explore, whatever it is. Um, And then there's the love for kind of the cracks in between. Like, for example, I I think I used to talk, actually, no, this is a much better example. This little guy. Yeah. hot, like, thing for for, uh, putting a plant. Yeah. (laughs) But I love love the idea of having, so I had one before, it was a little plant coming out of here, it died. (laughs) <laughs> my plants are all dead too for what it's yeah worth. yeah so um but for example like finding this little thing that i actually love like it's a weird <laughs> way of kind of saying like there's the people like the experience the self-love and then there's these little just discovering bits of joy throughout your day whether it's food sharing something with someone um, yeah. yeah so it's a little bit abstract i'm still kind of trying to figure that out but i think that's what matters to me is like finding and sharing and discovering love in the world. So I love that. That was a great answer. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> we can wrap it there. I guess you want to, you could do a little, little last plug on, on website or last plug. <laughs> yeah. if you want to check out everything that we do, um, fireside at com is our website and our Instagram is fireside at five as well. Um, what other plugs do I want to do? Plug shout out to Christian Dooley for starting these awesome podcasts. Like <laughs> thank you for having me and yeah. giving me an opportunity to talk about myself and share some of the background of the company. And, you know, I, I love what you're doing. I think it's really meaningful and I think it's, it's intentional and I think you're going to be very successful with it. So yeah. I wish you the best. Mm-hmm.